In this tutorial, I want to show you a tool that's great for teachers and students, but also for really just about anyone. And it's called Story Jumper. It's excellent for digital storytelling, for doing creative writing, for making children's books, things like that. And to show you an example of what it's capable of, here on their website, storyjumper.com, right now they have a sample called Megasaurus. I'm going to click on that. It opens up, and this is a digital version of the book. Notice that you can click play at times to hear audio, so let's do that. The Megasaurus, story by Thomas Weck and Peter Weck, narrated by Peter Weck. Nice. So that gives me kind of an intro to the book. Now I can click play. It opens up to the first page. Notice that there is a QR code that I can scan if I want to hear the audio on a cell phone or tablet. But I'm just going to click here in the lower right corner. You can also click in the upper right corner to turn the page. So, King Limelot was in trouble. His tiny, once happy beendom was in trouble. In fact, all of the tiny bean-shaped bears in his beendom were in trouble too. So as you can tell, as you turn the page, if there is audio, and if you have clicked this play button, anytime you turn the page, the audio will play. In this case, I turned off the audio. If I ever want to turn it back on though, I can just click play. The king asked Howl the Owl, will you help the baker make the pancakes? And it starts playing again. So let's look at how to create your own. Now before I do, you've probably noticed that here on the right, there's options to buy. At this point in time, storyjumper.com has the following options. If you only want to create a digital book, one that's online like I just showed you, that's completely free. But if you want your book published in physical form, it would be basically $25 for a 20-page book, and it goes up from there the more pages you add. That's for a hardcover. You can see there are other options, including a PDF version of your book or an audiobook. And there is an option here for doing fundraising through Story Jumper. I generally just use it free. So let's look at how to create your own digital books using Story Jumper. I'm going to click here in the upper right where it says Sign Up. If you already have an account, of course, you can just log in. But I'll just click Sign Up so you can see what that's like. You can sign in with Google, which is a really handy feature, especially in a lot of schools that use Google. Or you can just go here, choose a username, pick a password, and put your birthday in. The reason for the birthday, as it says here, is because anyone under the age of 13 would have to get parental consent before they can set up their own Story Jumper account. One additional thing you need to know about, if you are a teacher signing up to use Story Jumper, notice this checkbox. I'm a teacher and I want to use Story Jumper with my students in class. You would just put in the school zip code and school name. That gives you some additional options that you're going to want to have if you are a teacher. Once you've done this, you'll be able to then log in anytime you need to get into your account. So give me a minute to log in and then I'll resume the video. Now the first time that you set up an account and sign in, it's going to welcome you here and then it's going to ask you to pick a password for your first class. And so I'm just going to put in Learn Spanish. I'll click Create Class. Great, your first class, my first class has been created. Click Start so students can log in. So I click Start, add a student to your class so they can make a book. And all I have to do is click Add a Student, put in the student's first name, put in the student's last name, and notice that a username is automatically selected for the student. If you don't want that particular one, you could change it to something else. And then you could go on and add another student and just keep doing so until all of your students are added successfully. You can also add multiple students if you want to use a CSV file, maybe exported from Excel or from your grading or attendance system. Now, if you don't want to be the one to put in all of these names, Notice what you can do. You can click allow students to create their own accounts. Yes, show me the instructions. If you select that option, it gives you a URL. Any student that goes to this URL and puts in this class code and this password will be added not just to Story Jumper, but specifically to this exact class. For now, I'm just going to delete a couple of those students and I'll click save. And it gives me an option to make a practice book. But at this point, I'm just going to go back to my main Story Jumper page. And you can get there anytime you want by clicking here on Story Jumper on the logo. 
And here I can create classes. So here's my first class that I already created. If I want to create another class, I can just do so by clicking. And there are a few options here that I didn't point out before. So check those out. Those might be important to you depending on your class's situation. But that's where you would go to create additional classes. All right. I would like to create a book myself. So again, I'm just going to go back to the Story Jumper homepage and underneath the options for creating classes and managing classes, there's an option for my personal books. I can create my own digital book and I'll just do that. I'll click and it has a couple of different templates already pre-made. Here's a hero story book. Here's one about a monster, all about me, which might be great for the beginning of the school year. Here's one for an ABC book. But in this case, I'm just going to choose blank. So I click and it loads up the Story Jumper editor that I can use to make this book. And by default, it automatically brought me to the first blank page of my book. And here I can start writing my story. And so I'm just going to click here on big text box. And when I clicked on it, it added the text box to this page, which is technically page two. And I've just got a cursor there and I can just start writing my story. Okay, and as you type, notice that it's auto-saving every so often so that you don't lose your work. Just as you would expect, there are some font options to choose from. You can increase the font size or decrease it. You can change the font color, the background color, bold, italicize, etc. Now, as you're typing, if you decide that you don't want to fill up the whole page with text, that's fine. You can just go down here and use this little handle to adjust the text box. Also notice that in addition to a traditional text box, you can click to add this other kind of text box, which is kind of fun. And just as I did, you can resize it using the handles. If you want to move it, it's not obvious how to do that, right? If I click and try to move it, it's not letting me do so. But it's this hand here. If I can click on the hand, now I can move it and put it where I want it to be in the page. Maybe I'll put that up here at the top and type a subtitle or something like that. There are other kinds of text boxes you can add, like this one that looks like a scroll. There are speech bubbles, text bubbles, and a few others. Now, in addition to adding text, you can also add images. So here at the left, underneath text, we have props, and the props could include people or things. I'm going to do a search for cats, and you can see it brings up several. I'll pick one, two three, four. I'll pick these four cats and then I can just click away from the list of images and now you can see the four cats that I clicked on. They're now right at the top of my list of props and so I can just click to add each of these cats to my story and I can just click and drag to put them where I want them to be. Notice that if you click on this little button here you can click and hold and drag to rotate the objects you can make them bigger or smaller using the handles. There are some options as well. When you click on a particular image, you can duplicate it. And these arrows here, it's not obvious what they do, but basically whenever an object is overlapping another, if you want to change that, right? If I want to make this yellow cat appear behind the gray cat, I just click on the yellow cat and use these arrows, click them a few times to set the order of what should be on top of what. So those are some good options. You can use this button here to flip any of the props, any of the objects in your story, and the X removes props from your story. So with this text box, because I shortened it, made it so it didn't take up much of the screen, I could add pictures right with text. In many cases though, you're not gonna wanna do that. You're gonna want to have text on one page and maybe images on the other page. So I'm gonna click on the next page now and I'm gonna to go to scenes and you'll see that there are a few scenes to choose from. There's actually more than that. If you click on more scenes, you can get even more and you can search for scenes. So I would like a forest scene. It brings up several and I'll just click on this one. That's the one I'd like to use. I can X out of this pop-up and the scene I chose is at the top of the list now. Now I can just click, it adds the scene onto the page. And if I go back to props, notice that those same cats that are here on this page are still at the top of my list of props. So I can very easily add these same characters into my new scene. And I accidentally added a few extra cats. 
Now, as I alluded to earlier, you definitely can go back to text and you could put in text bubbles, speech bubbles for the cats in this case. And again, use the hand to move the text bubbles or the speech bubbles and just type what you would like the characters to say. So of course, I could just continue to edit this way to create my book. And across the bottom, you'll notice that there is a list of all the pages. So I could just click on page four to get to the blank page four, page five, I could jump ahead to nine, 10, and so forth. Now, one of the best things about Story Jumper, in my opinion, is the narration. If you choose, you can go to a particular page and click add voice. If you have a microphone or if you use a laptop that has a built-in microphone, you can then record your voice and add it to the page. So I'll do that. I'll click add voice. It gives me the record option. I click record and I get a request here from Story Jumper asking if it can use my microphone. So I'm going to allow that. I get a countdown, three, two, one. Once upon a time, there was a family of four, four cats. I clicked stop recording. I can play the narration to make sure it sounds okay. Two, one. Once upon a time, there was a fa I'm not very happy with that. It uh, accidentally recorded what I said right before what I really wanted to say. So I'm going to X out of that. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes. And then I'm going to try again. Record. Three, two, one. Once upon a time, there was a family of four. Four cats. I click stop. So there's my voice. If I want, I can add background music to the voice. Maybe a guitar. I could add some sound effects. Look, there's a cat sound effect. I'm going to add that. And now I can test it again. Once upon a time, there was a family of four. Now, what if I want to add a sound effect here? I paused the preview of my narration, and I would like to click this Add button again and see if I can add a second meow. And look, it allows me to do that. So this is kind of a timeline that you have here. And when you click play and then pause, it enables you to add more sound effects if you would like to. I'm gonna click save and it's putting my recording and the music and attaching them to this particular page in Story Jumper. I also want you to know that in addition to text, props and scenes, they also have photos. But these are photos that you would upload. Okay, so you could click upload your photos browse your computer, or you could click and drag your photos and drop them here. You can also search photos. So I can type in, let's say tree here, and it's searching the internet for a tree. And I could just click on a particular image and add it either as a scene, so a background or a prop, which would be in the foreground. I can click the check mark and add that particular photo to my book. Now watch what happens if I go to photos and do a search for tree PNG. If I do it that way, chances are I'll get a photo that does not have a rectangular background. And so I can choose that tree that I just picked and set it to be a prop, click the check mark. And now when I add the tree, look, it comes in without a rectangular background. So that's a trick that you can try. It may not always work, but it is worth a try. When you're done adding pages to your book, you should go back to the beginning and click on front cover. And maybe it would be better to do this first thing. But either way, just click to add a title. I can put the name of the author. I can choose the cover and spine pattern. So you can see what it is right now, but I could click to change that up. Choose a different pattern, let's say, a different color. And here on the cover, I could again add my characters. Okay, there's the cat and another cat. So I could do that. I could also go to scenes or photos and add those in as well. Here on the dedication page, you can add in a dedication just by typing it in there in the box. And just like you would expect, you can add props to the dedication page as well. If you ever make a mistake like I just did, I accidentally moved this text box, you can go here where it says undo and you can click that a few times to get back the way it was originally. And there I go again. So that's really all there is to the creation process in Story Jumper. Just add text, add props, add photos. And if you'd like, add your voice. When you're done, it gives you the option to share. So I can click share. When you click share, it gives you some options that can help you share your digital book. 
Now, if your account is brand new, it's going to pretty much prevent you from doing this unless you verify your email address. So when you sign up for StoryJumper, they send you an email that you have to click to verify your account. Once you've done that, then you should be able to share. If you want anyone in the world to be able to see your book, you would need to make it public. As it says here, of course, remove anything that violates copyright, and then just click make it public. Notice that you can also change that here where it says privacy level. Okay, I can just click public. I could allow others to copy my book and make their own versions of it, but I'm not going to do that at this time. I click save and now it's public. I can also share with family and friends just by copying and pasting this link. I could put it on Facebook. I could email it out to people. Students could email me their books as well. One of my favorite options though is this, embed on your site. And I can just copy that embed code with control C or on a Mac, command C. And then I can go to a website builder like weebly.com and there are many others as well that this would work with. Go to one of my websites, click edit site, or I could create a new site of course from scratch. Once it loads up the site, I could just look for an option for adding HTML or an embed code. In this case it says embed code. I'll just click on that, drag it onto the page, and if you would like to learn how to use Weebly.com, I do have an updated tutorial about Weebly that you could watch, but you can see I've just dragged embed code onto the page and I can now click to set the custom HTML, edit custom HTML. I paste in the code that I got from StoryJumper and then I can just click away from the box and it saves it. So there's my book. Now it's not really gonna work as I intend it to until I publish this Weebly page, but I can tell that this is gonna work well I'll be able to share this book with whomever goes to my website. I do want you to know that if you feel like the book comes in too small, you can edit the custom HTML. And this can be kind of intimidating, but notice what it says here, width 480 pixels. If I change that to let's say 800 pixels, if I also change it in the other parts of the code, let's see if it's anywhere else that I'm missing. Here we go, let's try changing that as well. Now that I changed all of those references to 480, changed them to 800, take a look at that. The book comes in much bigger and I'm gonna publish. Now when I go to my published web page, let's see what it looks like. Here's my web page. There's the book. It looks nice and big. I click play and it begins. I can go from page to page. If I recorded anything on that particular page, I can click listen. Once upon a time, there was a family of four four cats. And my recording, my sound effects, and my music all play. So this is a lot of fun and it's a great way I think to get students doing some creative writing, some digital storytelling, and of course you could use it to do things like explain in their own words the water cycle. This is great for foreign language. In just about any class, in just about any subject, your students could use Story Jumper to make some digital stories. I do want to point out one additional feature. If I go back to Story Jumper, click the Story Jumper logo, there's an option that you have if you go into a class that you've created, browse down to the bottom, and to create a template book for all students in a particular class. So if I want John and Mary here to be able to take a template that I built and then to add to it and work on it, I could do that. Students can easily copy your template books and insert their own content. So I can click there to build a template book for that class and then just save and exit when I'm done. In addition to that, it is possible if, again, you go into one of the classes that you've created, it is possible to create some group books so that students can work together on a particular book. So I think Story Jumper has some great options. I think it's a very powerful tool. I love the fact that you can add students' voices or your voice into a digital book and then you can share it. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a patron of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.